So this week I was in a training and I was asked to participate in a role playing exercise, which got me to think, which got me to start thinking about the role of role playing. Now, whenever I've done a role playing with um, my sales teams, they've always like run kicking and screaming or worse, they've mutiny on me. Uh, salespeople just hate role playing. Um, in fact, I think most people do. Uh, people always enter into role playing with a fear and trepidation. So I started, you know, as I participated in this role playing, and it wasn't that good. I mean, it was okay. They did a pretty good job, but the scenarios were weak. The preparation was not that great. And I'm not sure how effective it was. I mean, it proved a point, which is what they were trying to do, but it wasn't an effective training tool. But I started thinking, well, what is the role of role playing in our lives? So I think, you know, you know, throughout history, there have been lots of uh, psychologists and philosophers that have dove into the childhood mechanic of playing games and acting out roles, you know, like playing doctor or playing like you're a cops and robbers or whatever the case may be. Or the very the nowadays considered inappropriate game we played is when I was a child called Cowboys and Indians, right? These were these role playing scenarios were something that kids played all the time, uh, and you probably did too. And I know we did it in my elementary school. I'm thinking back about this girl named Julie, who was like this tyrant that ruled the elementary school playground, and she uh, had this thing called the army. And she was, of course, the general. And to be in her army, you had to follow a complex set of rules and guidelines. I mean, thinking back, this girl must have been like, like borderline genius for her to, you know, she's in third grade and she's coming up with this complex org structure. Uh, and more importantly, to maintain her uh, rule and her authority. Uh, and and with a comp with a series of reward systems, she would give out. Uh, you know, thinking back, that was a very complicated role play scenario that that a third grader came up with. So I'm thinking, you know, one of the one of the psychologists or philosophers that I looked up was name was George Herbert Mead. I think he was out of the University of Chicago. He wrote a lot. He wasn't very published, but he wrote a lot, and he had a lot to say about the dynamic of role playing to help form self identity. So I think that I think his I think there's a lot of truth to what he says. But I you know I wonder if just because we form our identity when we're younger, does that mean the role of role playing is now finished in our lives? And I think the answer is absolutely no. Uh, although it's less evident to us, I think we're role playing all the time. Anytime we're ready to take on a new challenge, take on a new job, take on a new role in our life, become something new, like a new father or a new mother or whatever the case may be, or I'm entering into retirement or I'm entering into a new phase in my life, I think we, we are constantly visualizing what that might look like. We're constantly trying to think, okay, what would, what would this be like if I was that way? So we vision, we role play, we feel it out. I hear my wife talking to a friend or a colleague at work, and I hear them talking through scenarios. This is just a more advanced form of role playing that we're used to that we did as a child. So, uh, you know, consider the applications. I mean, role playing is used everywhere, especially in specialized fields like the healthcare business. Um, I know when you practice to be a nurse or a doctor, you're constantly being put into role play scenarios. My wife who went through law school, she was constantly being put into role playing scenarios so that people could actively and openly question and visualize and understand the process they had to do. I think maybe the hesitancy of role playing has come from bad experiences. I mean, most people that prepare for role playing don't do a very good job. It's lukewarm at best, the scenarios are horrible, it takes a lot of planning and understanding and design for a facilitator to put together a really good role playing scenario where people really get learning, but also reflection time and feedback. Most of the time I've been part of them, they've been rushed and they haven't been effective. 
However, I think there's a new era in role playing that's coming, and that ro- new era in role playing is with AI tools. Just as an example, and I, I wrote this in my blog, I went on to uh, uh, an AI tool today, um, and I, and by the way, I tried it in several of them, and the most effective one was Grok on on X or Twitter. Um, the reason why it was more effective because it asked me. It didn't always ask me questions that were typical. It asked me oddball questions, which I thought was very, it asked me questions that you'd think a real human would ask, which was really interesting. But basically I submitted my resume and I said, based on my resume, create a scenario and interview me for a job. And so it did so. Uh, And so I answered, it gave me a question, I gave it an answer, and then it gave me feedback on my answer. Now, that was incredible. I mean, if you think about that, the amount of preparation it would take and the involvement it would take, and and the AI engines come up with this in in almost seconds. So I learned a lot about how I answer questions. Some of it was very good, but some of it wasn't so good. Then I started experimenting with, can you pretend like you're a customer, a potential customer for this product? And I submitted the details, the value prop on the product. And then I said, you know, pretend you're a customer and I'm going to try to sell you. And it it did a great job. Um, some of the AI tools were very formal about it and some of them were very uh, flippant about it. Um, one of them focused more on objections. Another one focused more on diving into the value prop. So I thought it was interesting. It gave me a lot to think about as I wrote my responses. Finally, I think embracing role playing is something that we're going to do whether we like it or not. So we might as well do it in the right way. I think there's ways you can make it more effective. Um, You can definitely do more preparation, really focusing on the scenarios. Uh, giving appropriate reflection and feedback time. I think also really, uh, you know, making sure that you design them to be very relevant to the people that you're working with or even to yourself. I think these are powerful learning tools. I think we use them all the time in our lives. And so my, my thought is that role playing can be a very effective tool in my own personal transfer transformation, as well as in, uh, the work that I'm doing. Thank you.